Okay, what do we have here? Looks like we have nice, evenly laid out texels. Good. Let's take a look at what I did with the cylinder. Uh, if I disable the receiver shading material, these are uh, this red sort of half fill on these icons means that the the UVs are currently being displayed just so you can see, you know, at a glance. So yeah, all I really did was, uh, after I editable polyed it, I just went into vertex mode and just connected, basically. C is my shortcut, the, the C key for connecting verts together. Um, just nice and fast, it's directly under my index finger. Oh, I didn't connect these, that's bad. Okay, everything tries, which is good. Yeah, that's a try. And it's really just um, not pouring too much over every single little vert because, you know, it's best just to get it done fast. I don't know why that's triangulated because there's so many verts on a model and you want to just get in a frame of mind where you know you're moving quickly because there's just so much to do looks like I missed a few more yeah I've got that one, I've got that one so if we take a look at the UV we can see if I control A on the model select all the faces we can see where the seams are more clearly. So I've, I've tried to keep it to uh, just 90 degree angles. You can see uh, where I've chosen to split up the faces a bit more. This is quite a difficult shape because it's, you know, quite a lot of angles and it's a bit, a bit weird. But yeah, as long as there's not too many islands, if I've not overused too many islands, then that's fine. Or at least if there aren't too many different smoothing groups, because as I said before, too many smooth, too many different smoothing groups is uh, bad for optimization. So yeah, if I turn off the uh, UV view for these, you can see that the grip and the barrel are on different materials to the receiver, and I've added the iron sights material. Uh, I've added the iron sights onto the same material as the receiver just because the iron sights appear on uh, pretty much all of the the uh, the scopes so you know the reflex the iron sights are still going to be there the long scope is still going to be there so it's that, that kind of thing where if they're there all the time you might as well pack them into the same texture as the receiver rather than giving them their own small texture which will need to be loaded anyway. It's just, you know, give and take. They're, they're so small, the meshes, for the iron sight that you might as well pack them into a receiver. So, what we can do now is do a test bake. Uh, why did I hide those? Let's hide these two. So it's just our receiver material that we're working with. Oh, what you can also do is just another tip if I undo my hiding. If you want to quickly select, let's say the receiver, you can go here to select children and then click here and that will select just the the low poly. But I don't really like to rely on this because what it does is it, it selects every object underneath obviously and if you accidentally type or, it, oh that's it, if you rename this layer and hit enter it will rename every single object as the same layer so it's generally something I don't really like to rely on. Alternatively you can just lock the other layers and then when you do a control A, it obviously won't won't select your, your grip and stuff. Okay, so these are all on the same material, so we can just hit edit and see what we have. So yeah, we the way I like to, to lay out my UVs is in general I like to sort of I like to sort of imagine the gun from the side and so the hammer would be, you know, the, the upper right 
end of the gun so I put it you know upper right here uh, these smaller objects like the iron sights I usually leave them quite close to the UV square you know the cylinders in the middle of the gun and sort of up a bit so I put it here this is just so when you're when you're when you're you know tending to each object and you un unwrapping it you don't overlap the UVs when we group unwrap it like this so for example if okay if I delete this go into the cylinder this will probably illustrate it better and then you know I've unwrapped it and I just stick it down here and then you know I'm good when I unwrap it you'll see that oh oh no I've overlapped the cylinder with the receiver and if I wanted to pick the UVs out you know it's gonna be really annoying and take a lot of time luckily yeah I think I did select oh, got some other stuff here that I've selected it's quite lucky I don't need to undo what I just did, the stupid thing that I just did. Uh, okay, so we're going to do a test bake on just this receiver body itself. I'm going to delete it anyway. <laughs> uh, have this and unhide the receiver high poly. And then we want to select both. So we have, oh, we want to make sure we've named it properly. So here we have frame low. We want to name this frame high and make sure our other yeah, frame high hammer hinge frame high rivet and rivet so we're going to select this this and this and then select these and isolate so now what we have is we have the low poly frame the high poly frame and three what are called floaters which basically are just above the mesh and we'll will bake down onto it, basically project down onto it when we do the bake. For now, I'm just going to illustrate what how these work as floaters, but later on I will actually model them out into the low poly, because if you're holding the gun like this, the nuts uh, they are basically sticking out of the side, so they affect what's called the silhouette, obviously, of the model. So you know, if you're rotating the model, you, you'll, you can see that the nuts should be sticking out, so they should be modeled into the low poly rather than be completely flat. Like some, I don't know, 90s texture or something. <laughs> okay, so we've got these isolated. What we can do is, or what we have to do first is to check that our receiver, all of the islands are within that zero one square, which I talked about before. We can sort of just dump them in here. We don't need to worry about how big they are right now, how much space they take up, just as long as they don't overlap sort of thing. Uh, they're going to be sort of packed in with lots of other parts anyway, so this is not too far off from the kind of size that we're probably going to end up with. So we'll collapse that. That's now saved. So this is basically ready for baking, so we're going to select it all. And then we're going to go to our hunting revolver folder. And now we'll make texturing receiver folder. So what I like to do is have separate folders for each separate element. So if I do texturing barrel standard, texturing barrel fluted, that kind of thing. So you know each separate part is its own sort of texturing folder for itself. Then we go inside the receiver folder and we're going to go with XP textures and Marmo bake. So our bake textures are going to export into here and later on when we texture it in Marmo, uh, Painter, sorry, uh, they'll export into here. And the, the, the textures part of this folder is important because we, we need this so that later on a program called Elric, which will convert our textures for us, is able to read the folder, or at least it, it, it's quite fussy. It needs the folder to end in the word textures for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to call this Sealer Bake. Dot FBX. Won't worry about any of this stuff. We just need to make sure that uh, I guess it's the right scale and have these settings. So we've exported, 
the, so this warning is just to say that it, it can't export with the Turbo Smooth modifier. It needs to basically save that onto the mesh and, and tessellate it. If we were to open the mesh in another program, it would basically already be subdivided and we wouldn't be able to undo that. If you did want to transfer the high poly into another program, you would remove the Turbo Smooth modifier and export it like that and then reapply the subdivision in the program of your choice. So now we're in Marmoset. I already did that. So what we want to do is we want to click on New Baker. It's a little bread loaf. I know it's cute. Uh, click Quick Loader and we go into Receiver and we load the Bake FBX which we just exported. And we get this. So what I like to do is I just drag default onto the Baker and uh, then all right, if we open this folder, we can see what which meshes are our high poly. So we can see all the meshes which are going to bake under the frame, uh, under the frame name here, and the low as well. Uh, if we hit, if we click on the low category, we can adjust what's called the baking cage. So this this is basically the projection cage which projects out from the mesh which is then looking for the high poly mesh to then bake down onto it. It's quite hard to describe. <laughs> Let's just hit the bake button and see what happens. So what we'll do is we'll give it an output into Marmo Bake and we're going to call it. So this, this um, actually this name isn't as important as what we name later. So we'll just call it raw receiver and just hit enter because what marmoset will do is when it bakes it out it'll give it different suffixes like underscore n for normal underscore ao for uh, ambient occlusion that kind of thing so we'll hit save and that's our path done what we want to do is we want to go for 16 oh, 64 that's new that's high uh padding moderate i don't usually change that i just noticed it now presets right uh yeah, so with the maps, I usually go with normals, uh, curvature, and ambient occlusion, but I don't usually tick curvature. I usually start with just normals, so that's ticked. So this part is important. We, we click the cog, and we make sure that we have flip Y on. So what this is, is normal maps basically work on, at least tangent-based ones, they work on a sort of coordinate system where you have you know X, Y, and Z, Z, um, Z coordinates, and a normal map essentially controls how light falls on the model, what what the light looks like when it falls on the model. But the thing is, there are different standards for normal maps and sort of different directions for how these different tangents should go. So conventionally, you, you well in almost all normal maps, you'd have the red channel as X, green channel as Y, and the blue channel as Z. So when you say a normal map has had its Y flipped, that means you've gone into the green channel and inverted it, basically. So Fallout 4 uses direct X normals, which means it has X minus, Y plus, and Z minus normals, as opposed to OpenGL normals, which have X plus, Y plus, and Z plus. I think I've got it the wrong way around. <laughs> I think direct X is Y minus, actually. So yeah. My mistake. Direct X would be probably X plus Y minus Z plus. You don't need to know the specifics about this. I mean, I was baking long before I knew what OpenGL or Direct X normals were, but I knew what flipping the normals was, and that's usually flipping the Y channel. But long story short, tick this. <laughs> so we have that done. So basically, I mean, what you could do is, which would be quite inconvenient. You I mean, you could untick this and then you bake out the normals as OpenGL, import them into Substance Painter as OpenGL normals, texture it, then export it, and then invert it. What we're doing is we're going right to the start of the workflow and flipping the normals then. So they're basically pre flipped, and later on, we don't need to flip them back or forth or anything. So yeah, then we just hit bake. That bakes it out. It took a bit longer than usual. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this, which toggles the visibility of the high poly, just like this toggles the visibility of the low. 
and so basically all we have right now is our low poly mesh so we go up to the material which we applied to it go to the normal map and make sure we flip Y so that it displays our flipped Y normal map properly and then just click on the normal and we have our baked normal applied to the model nice smooth edges if I click on the model you can see that it's uh, low poly I'll go to wireframe you can see this is a nice optimized mesh for the game and our normal map allows it to have higher detail so there are a few things to troubleshoot we we do have a bit of a weird error here where the floaters are not quite being picked up by the ray that seems the projection cage didn't quite reach past the bolts so if I unhide and then go to the low you can see that the projection cage isn't going past the nut so I don't know if it's called a nut, rivet, whatever we're calling it nut so what we need to do is expand the cage past the nut so that it bakes properly if I unhide the high and what it's actually done is it's, it's automatically rebaked to a low quality just when I change that cage so what we can do is, which is quite interesting, we can actually see the result of us moving the cage if you want to really fine tune it you can use this and then after you've done that hit bake and then boom it's done a more high quality bake but yeah as you can see the, the problem I mentioned before which is when you get to a very acute angle on the model the nut just flattens out and you, you can't see the, the bump there so I'll definitely be going back into the low poly and modeling out bumps for each one of these so they stick out of the model there's another thing I want to talk about which is skewing so when you have these floaters are a good example in the middle of the mesh sometimes when you bake they'll they'll sort of be uh, projecting in a weird angle like the cage has been looking at them at, at the wrong the wrong angle so what we can do to rectify that is to go to paint skew small size highish flow and basically paint onto the mesh which will effectively straighten out so these these green spikes are the previewed normals basically for the mesh and by painting onto a bit hard to see with the colors by painting onto the mesh we're causing these normals to poke out directly what we call it perpendicular to the face so this, this is basically doing a perfect straight on bake onto these bolts and yeah then when I hit bake you can see that they're much cleaner they're not angled at all and they're very even like the the bake has been perfectly on now in the past you'd have to place basically a vert if I turn the wireframe back on you'd have to place one of these verts you'd, you'd have to draw out you know a to, for a vert to be right in the middle a vertex to be right in the middle of, of each of these details uh, because they're a separate element and in order for the cage to project them properly but with the magic of marmoset you can just do this instead <laughs> and save on the, the vertices and therefore save on optimization and, and that's good so yeah that's the baking for one piece uh, I'll go ahead and show you the wrapping, UV unwrapping for the entire low poly next we're gonna import basically all of the for the receiver low and high and do one big bake, ah, lovely